Hello, this is Casey with a look at setting up the MIDI clock feature in LumaDesk. If you're using Virtual DJ, um, that, which is my off audio software of choice, um, you can set Virtual DJ to send a MIDI clock uh, signal to uh, LumaDesk. So first you've got to have a MIDI driver. And uh, there's several different ones out there. This happens to be the first one that I found uh, that, uh, that works. Uh, with my is compatible with my computer software. Some of them out there, they're not. Uh, they might not be compatible with uh, Windows 7. But Loop B1 is a free MIDI driver uh, for personal use. After 30 days, if you're going to use it commercially, they ask that you uh, you pay for it. Uh, it's only 13 bucks US, so it's pretty reasonable um, for you know for what it offers you. Um, and then they have another option which is loop B30. The difference between loop B1 and loop B30 is the number of channels. Loop B1 is one MIDI channel, loop B30 is 30 uh, MIDI channels. The 30 uh, channel driver is uh, about $20 US. So you download, um, download your selection that you want. Uh, once you download it, install it. Um, when you go to install it, it can take a couple of minutes. It seems like it's kind of slow, but uh, the time varies uh, system to system. But uh, but it is installing correctly. It, on some systems, it did take you know between two or three minutes to get it installed. So just be patient with it. Let it let it do its thing. Once you install the MIDI driver, then um, you will need to go to the Virtual DJ site and uh, go to the download menu after you log in and select Tools and Drivers and uh, download the registry tool. Um, once you download it, you'll need to extract the files to a directory of your choice. And in my case, I did, uh, downloaded it to the Virtual DJ, Plugins, and Other folder. And then you can open up the interface. Uh, when you first open up the uh, registry tool, um, look down here in the lower middle send MIDI clock to and when you first open it this will be blank if you've installed your driver correctly then it will be listed in the drop down menu just select it apply and close and you have configured virtual DJ to send a BPM signal to uh, MIDI clock now you gotta tell um, LumaDesk what to do Okay. So open up LumaDesk. First thing you want to do is click on the Configuration tab and go to General Settings and under uh, MIDI Clock on the General tab it will say None and you will need to select Loop B and then click OK. At this point uh, it's best for you to restart LumaDesk, close it and reopen it. And make make sure that it's talking to the MIDI driver correctly. Sometimes that was an issue on a couple of installations for me. Um, once you've done your configuration, um, then you want to go to the BPM tab. And I will open up the visualizer. Now this is the uh, demo show that comes with LumaDesk. I've added a third queue down here with four different scenes with uh, four different movement positions and four different colors so we can so it's easy to see what it's doing and when each uh, scene has a one second fade time and a one second uh, hold time so I'll play that back for you as you can see here uh, the playback movement is very smooth it's as recorded uh, and that's important because once we get on the live panel and we activate the MIDI clock and the BPM trigger um, the playback movement will become choppy only in the 3D visualizer. Uh, in real life, it is as recorded, but when you turn on that trigger on the visualizer, it does become choppy, but don't worry about it. It's, it's just in the 3D visualizer. Um, so that's how that looks. So now we will click on the Live tab, and we need to open Virtual DJ as well. So I will do that before I forget and we're going to use Cupid Shuffle there he is, I'll get it loaded up 
All right, so if you look here in the window, uh, it's, it shows manual, and you can see the flashes are for 143 beats per minute. That's what it's currently triggering on. And this is in manual mode. So to change that, you'll click on BPM settings, and you can see manual is selected. And uh, if you click BPM by MIDI clock, then the window will change. It will read MIDI clock, and it will no longer be flashing at least so long as you don't have any audio playing. That's why it's not flashing. And which I'll go ahead and play that, start that now. I'll turn this down some. Cupid Shuffle. All right, and if you look at the MIDI clock, it is flashing on beat. Um, so now um, you need to activate the BPM trigger on your specific sequences. So if you right click on the um, sequence you want, you will uh, see these options here. You can have it uh, trigger on uh, one beat or every half beat or quarter beat or two beats or four beats. So first we'll do one beat. Bring this back up. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can see it's triggering in time with our track in Virtual DJ. If we stop the track, the show stops. If we hit play, stop, play and it just picks up where it left off so long as the scene is active. All right. So if you want to go back, if you want to change the beat trigger from one beat to four beats, then every four beats it will change to the next scene in the sequence. Or we can do every half beat. which is really fast. So now we've disabled the BPM trigger. And one thing that I noticed, um, when doing this live, um, the BPM, the mini clock trigger, works best for up-tempo um, songs and sequences. When you try to use it with a slow song, it it makes the uh, show, uh, the light shows run a little faster. So take that in consideration. If you're a DJ and you're using this uh, in a fast song, slow song capacity, um, it may be best for you to just leave the BPM trigger off um, for uh, your slow cues and just leave it on uh, for your fast cues and you can adjust these on the fly um, you know you got to disable the BPM triggering to change the beat adjustment and that is basically it that is uh, getting virtual DJ to send the BPM via MIDI clock to LumaDesk and uh, getting it set up inside LumaDesk. So if you have any questions uh, or comments, please don't hesitate to post those below. Happy to help, and uh, be sure you visit the LumaDesk forums for any questions as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you.